Let's face it, we always have those times where we don't know when we should summon for a character in Honkai Star Rail because either something gets announced or someone gets announced, let's say Fei Zhao, and we're like, oh shoot, maybe I should skip this entire section of banners, right? However, sometimes it's very difficult, and I think this is one of those times where it's actually difficult to understand if you should skip. So today, we're going to be talking about if you should skip any of these characters, like Yun Lee or Huo Huo, and, you know, what they're good for. So let me know in the comments down below what you think, but let's go ahead and dive right into it. Obviously, first things first, I want to talk about these four stars, because I think that there are benefits to these four stars in some ways. So let's first talk about Yu Kong, right? Now, the first thing you're going to say is Yukong is kind of out of, uh, outdated, out of dated, out of dated, outdated, right? Which can be agreed upon. I think that Yukong has, uh, has long since been outdated. I think that Yukong wasn't even the best, uh, Harmony character when she came out. Um, unfortunately, I did for a time because I really wanted to believe that the Mommy Foxian was the best unit of the game in regards to Harmony, but Ting Yun was still holding on strong, right? But there are some good things about Yukong, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So first things first, the skill right here, you get two stacks of Roaring Bowstrings, which gives you 100% boost in attack to the team. Uh, you lose one stack per turn, and I believe that's per character's turn. Um, I could be wrong on that one, though. I'm pretty sure it means just the overall turn, though. Um, but it's so, it's to me, at least it's worded weirdly, right? Uh, because it says, including Yukong's turn ends. So it could be that... You know it sounds like oh yeah whenever two allies turns are done but it's actually the entire turn is done so or you know two of yukok's turns i don't know it's it's very uh tough to in my opinion understand i have times where i just don't understand stuff but warring bowstrings does give that 100 percent attack boost which is really really good you got your uh ultimate here which your ultimate gives you 31.5 percent crit rate and 78 percent crit damage if roaring bowstrings is active so of course you got you know your actual damage that you're getting from you know the actual ultimate but you're also getting a massive crit boost on ultimate which is amazing in my personal opinion right uh also the technique makes you a very speedy boy that's right you get a 20 percent speed boost uh from my understanding right 20 or no 35 percent not 20 percent I was thinking 20 seconds. So you get a 35% speed boost for 20 seconds in the overworld, right? That being said, also, uh, it gives you automatic roaring bowstrings times two, which gives you that automatic 100% attack boost to the team for two turns. So she's good. The problem is that she's very outdated. Uh, and the only reason why I say that is because even the next unit uh, can sometimes outclass her, especially when it comes to utility, right? And that's who we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Hanya right hanya is also a harmony character of the physical typing so big thanks from hanya right her skill recovers one skill point for every two basic skill or ultimate attacks used uh when burden is active on a target now what does that mean so let's say you're fighting three enemies and you uh activate her skill on one of those enemies so long as that one enemy is still alive burden is active for two basic skill or ultimates right that being said with how many times a character can attack now, it's kind of tough to say like, you know, oh, well, this will stay on forever. Um, so there, there's there's a lot of things to really consider. Um, it's, 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 it's one of those things where I think it's good if you're using a basic, a basic attack, because not only are you gaining the one from the basic attack, but you're gaining one from the skill as well. So you're gaining two skill points per basic attack. Um, and if you're using an ultimate, you're getting a free skill point as well. The only time where it's going to be tough, or not really tough, but um, when you use a skill, you're not going to gain a skill point. You're just going to like cancel it out. So in a way, it's got its benefits, but it's only for two turns. And Hanya can only activate this once, like every like couple of attacks. So be wary of that. Like You have limited time to do that. Um, so I would say use her skill in a pinch when you're running out of skill points and you have one left use that and you know that you can use the basic attack for the next two attacks. Uh, that's just personally what I would recommend. Um, she also gives increased damage to burden enemies as well, which is really good. Uh, increases speed by 22.5% of Hanya's own speed 
to an ally and 72% of the allies attack is also added on to when she activates her ultimate. So that's pretty pog right there. <laughs> like, which like ultimates are easy to get nowadays. It just feels like, uh, even without energy regeneration. Uh, so just having that makes her a lot better in my personal opinion, giving that extra attack and speed, right? Um, like I said, the only downside to Hanya's account or Han Hanya's account, uh, Hanya's actual kit is that when burden's gone off the enemy or you use your two basics and all that, you're not getting any more skill point, uh, back to you. So not only that, but like when you think about it for skill point usage, like, would you rather have Hanya or would you rather have someone like, you know, uh, sparkle who gives a four, uh, four skill points off of ultimate right so this is a good sec secondary option for skill point recovery if you don't have a sparkle which i don't know who wouldn't have sparkle because yeah uh i think a lot of people have sparkle now so uh but let's go ahead and move over to lynx now lynx is an abundance quantum character she's a healer through and through that's really what she is so there's not going to be really much to talk about her i think that she's a great four star healer in general she gives a lot of continuous healing uh, which is fantastic, right? Um, gives you a lot of healing potential. Um, especially when you, like, if you don't have that secondary, uh, healer from like, say a Luocha or another character that we're going to be talking about here in a bit, whoa, whoa, she's a very good second option. Very good. Uh, skill on preservation, like when she like actually uses her skill, if she uses her skill on a preservation or a destruction unit, they're going to take aggro from the enemies, right? So... Like, let's say you pair her up with someone like a, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, why am I, why am I blanking? Like, I, I'm blanking on the dude's name and I don't know why, you know, uh, Mr. Bus or maybe I'll take it all. I don't know why I'm, I feel so bad for, how am I messing up on his name? I feel so bad. Hold on. We got to go to the character section because I'm losing my mind here, right? I, I feel so bad because I actually like him as a character. Uh, Adventurine. That's what it is. Adventurine. I don't know why I thought his name started with a P. Um, but if you activate her skill on him, like if he actually needs healing, which is very rare, uh, he's going to take all the aggro. So there's that. But um, as a downside of that, if you activate it on, let's say, somebody like Imbiber Lune or even Yun Li, who's on this uh, banner as well, they're going to take the aggro, which this could work in Yun Li's favor. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. So Lynx is a very good healer. I haven't had a lot of experience with her. I need to build her up personally, but yeah. Let's talk about the other healer on this banner. Whoa, whoa, who could be considered as the best healer, not just because of her healing potential, right? So let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, on her skill, she de dispels one debuff from the target ally and restores HP. On the other side of that as well, with her talent, she also dispels another, like, debuff. So you could dispel two debuffs from your team, like, each time you activate your tech, or not technique, but talent, which is really, really good. Like, getting those debuffs off could spell, could spell for you to actually last a little bit longer on the actual fight, right? So there's that. Ultimate restores energy to the team as well. I believe it's 15%, if I remember correctly, or 15%. Uh, regenerates energy to all allies. Oh, no, equal to 22.5% of their respective max energy. That's really good, uh, in general. So, very good ultimate right there, right? And then the technique reduces enemy attack for 25% for two turns. Not only that, if you're trying to, like, not deal with any enemies in the overworld, if you're just trying to run around, you can activate that, and it scares them away, which is really good. Um... So she could be considered one of the best healers in the game because of not only her healing abilities, but her dispel debuff potential, which is really good. By the way, before we get into Yun Li, make sure to check out our wonderful sponsor, Gamer Subs. Use code Tystra for 10% off. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm actually drinking a lot of copium, hoping that I don't spend a lot of money trying to get Yun Li. So if you like cranberry, get yourself a thing of copium. Uh, again, use code Tystra for 10% off. Mm. Ah, so good. All right. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and talk about Yoon Lee, right? Oh, excuse me. Yoon Lee has a lot of destructive potential. And I say this only because I know, like, I've gotten to know her kid a little bit. And 
her potential is really good. Um, I don't know if she's going to surpass somebody like a uh, Imbibe or Lune, but let's go ahead and go over her real quick. So on her skills, she self heals, right? She heals 35% of her own, uh, like she heals her HP with 35% of her own attack, right? So you obviously want to scale with attack for her plus 256.25 uh, points as well. So that's a lot of healing considering that you could boost up her attack like crazy, right? So you don't have to worry about, you know, an HP percentage, especially since you're probably going to be using her skill a decent amount of the time, right? Now, her ultimate also gives her the parry mechanic, which we got to see during the live stream, which is really, really good. Like a lot of destructive power in general because of the fact of how many times you could be attacked. Um, I don't think there's actually a limit of how many times you could be attacked on this. Uh, let's see, consumes 120 energy, Yunli ga gains parry and taunts all enemies lasting until the end of the, ne oh, next ally's turn. So until the next turn, you're gonna be countering. So. You want to build her up with attack and speed because you want her to be at the top so that way any enemies attack her and she starts knocking them out bro so at the end of the turn is when she stops doing the parry mechanic so build your union lee with a lot of speed because you're going to need it right to make sure that happens um she also restores 15 energy from her uh talent usage which i think is really good and also puts her in the parry stat state i think is what from what i saw yeah in the counter or launches a counter on the attacker uh, physical damage up to 150% of Yunli's attack to the attacker and physical damage equal to 75% of Yunli's attack to adjacent targets. So no, she doesn't go into parry state, but she does counter automatically. So I think that's really good. Um, again, she has a lot of destructive potential. I think that she could be, uh, one of the best damage dealers in the game, uh, depending on how you build her, right? So ultimately, should you summon for any of these two characters? Um, I think so. I think that if you're lacking a destruction dps which shouldn't be the case but if you are or you need a secondary destruction unit yun lee has a lot of great potential right um not only that but if you're looking for an amazing healer you have huo huo who again could be argued as the best healer in the game you have a lot of good four stars in general uh the only downside is that yukong is severely outdated which sucks for me to say because i love yukong right uh bahanya has a lot of potential especially if you don't have a sparkle lynx is very good in case you somehow don't get huo huo because i think huo huo out uh heals her in multiple ways um but yeah you have a lot of potential with this banner and i think that this is a very good summon for you to summon on you have a lot of great potential so uh let me know in the comments down below what you think is there is there any reason why you wouldn't summon on these banners? Um, and let me know. I definitely want everybody's opinion on this. But that's going to be it for today. Love you all to death. And as always, we will catch you in that next video. Please take care and be safe.